Good morning and welcome back to Italy, day number two. Got myself a jersey. This is this is the jersey that I've been supplied with for the Grand Fondo, which is tomorrow. Today's like a pre-race ride, I guess. And yeah, what an absolutely stunning morning. It's currently nine o'clock or 26 minutes past nine and it is already like 15 degrees. There's gonna be highs of 19 to 20 today. So not a breath of wind as you can see from those flags right there. Yeah, not a bad day to ride a bike in Italy. Or as I should say, it's not a bad day to ride a bike in Emilia Romagna. I think that's right. Alessandro, welcome to the video. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> uh, welcome in Italy. <laughs> yeah, first question, how do you pronounce the name of this, this region? Emilia Romagna? Emilia Romagna. I don't know why they call uh, like this. Yeah. In the past, maybe, maybe because uh, Giulio Cesare across Rubicone, when yeah. across Rubicone, Rubicone is uh, not far from here. It's okay. About 30 k's from here, so maybe from that. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> so you're going to be our tour guide today, showing us around your your local area. <laughs> it's very uh, it's very pretty around here. Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful here. It's uh, it's my my area, so it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so what is the what is the plan today? Where are we going to go to? We will go for uh, Predapio, no, before uh, Castrocaro, Castrocaro Terme, and uh, Predapio. Yep. After Predapio, Rocca delle Caminate, a, a rock uh, on the on the top of a, on a, of a hill where uh, where we will stop for lunch. Okay. How many k's is the route today? About 60, 70 more or less. Nice and steady before the race tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A great warm up. What is the terrain like around here? For Italy, is it flat or? Yeah, flat. <laughs> it depends. Yeah, it's not flat. <laughs> it depends. For me, it's not flat. Yeah. <laughs> no, here you can decide to have uh, short uh, heels uh, or yeah. uh, uh, longest heels. Yeah. Just you can arrive. Uh, there's, a, there's a good variety. Yeah, you can decide. One kilometer steep, one kilometer easy. Yeah. Or six, five kilometers. Steep or easy, <laughs> you can do everything here. What, what do you prefer? Ah, I prefer flat. The views at the top of this climb are just incredible. We climbed from that town down there, up here, and uh, it's wow. It's cool because the roads are just so quiet around here. There's a lot of cyclists. So Alessandro calls this route today a medium route. We've just climbed a 2K climb there and he said it's a flat, quote unquote, a flat climb. Bro, that ain't a flat climb. It's funny to see the different perception between British and, and Italian as to what's a climb and what's not. It's a little bit windy today. Is, yeah. it, is it always this windy? No, not always like this. <laughs> In this period, yeah. you are lucky, so it's like this, but yeah. not, not, new, not usually. Okay, so we've just climbed to the top of uh, 
What was this climb called? No, now an interview. <laughs> ha, ha, ha! You killed me. <laughs> what is the What is the name of the climb? Uh, Rocca delle Caminate is a famous climb nearby because there is a force on on the top. Yeah. Uh, it was it became famous on the Second World War. Yeah. By uh, Mussolini. Okay. And. Uh, so it's famous in Forli, uh, yeah. near my town, and uh, beautiful uh, street, uh, beautiful road. Did you say uh, the Copy Bartoli goes up, goes up here this year? Yeah, Copy Bartoli this year uh, will have uh, a loop here seven times this climb. Wow. It will be really an art stage with a finish in uh, in the middle of Forli. Oh, okay, so it's you, beautiful. Will it be a day for the sprinters or for the climbers? <laughs> Not really climbers. Yeah. Sprinters, not at all. Yeah. But all uh, guys uh, can 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 stay with the climbers. Yeah, hala Philippe. <laughs> so have you have you well, raced have you raced about copy Bartoli? Yes, a, a lot of times. Yeah. Uh, four or five times, I don't remember yet. Really. And uh, yeah, it was beautiful uh, for me. It was really beautiful because I was at home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, how many how many years were you a professional rider? I was pro for six uh, years. Yeah. From uh, uh, 2011 till uh, 2016. Yeah. So when you when you stopped pro professional cycling, did you find it hard <coughs> to find a, to get a normal job? Um, oh, it, I was lucky. I was lucky because, uh, uh, well, um, on my last year of career, I just uh, start uh, okay. uh, to work something uh, yep. um, as a, a coach. Okay. So you had and I was studying studying for it. Yeah. And now I have, I have my own job, my own uh, center okay. uh, with physiotherapy, uh, nutrition, uh, and uh, me uh, for as a coach. coach. Uh, I have at the gym, uh, and uh, so yeah. I, I, I create my future. Yeah. <laughs> so after around two hours of riding, Alessandro took us down to a local vineyard where we were given a guided tour of the facility, and then we finally sat down and had some food. As this vineyard was around 60k from where we are staying, luckily there was a minibus waiting to drive us home, so we didn't have to ride 140 kilometers pre-race. That wouldn't be a good idea, I don't think. What a day! What a day! I think uh, I think only being able to sleep for three hours the day prior to traveling is really starting to catch up on me right now. But it was absolutely awesome to ride with Alessandro today. It was an absolute pleasure. He was telling me stories about his days racing. He was telling me one particular story about how he was racing for Nippo Vinny Fantini back in 2015 and he got the opportunity to ride the Giro d'Italia. It was stage 10 and he managed to make the breakaway on what was a flat sprinter's day. He got into the breakaway with four other guys, all of which were Italian riders that all knew each other. So he said like the work ethic, like, no one was trying to do anyone over. Everyone was working and giving 110%. He said it was a stage that finished very very close to his hometown and the route actually went past his front door so he wanted to be in the breakaway he wanted to stay in the breakaway like off the front of the bunch until he got to that point got like past his house which was 5k to go from the finish of the stage and he managed to do that this is the front of the race we mentioned very early on that there are two riders from the region one rider from the town that we're heading to and that is Alessandro Malaguti the man on your screen in the orange and navy blue and then subsequently the break ended up going and staying away the sprint from the main bunch behind was won by Andre Greipel but the stage was won by Nicola Bohem off of Bardiani so yeah very insightful very knowledgeable very inspirational talking to, to someone like that who's, who's been and done it he's been a professional he's been you know podiumed on a stage of the, of the Giro d'Italia I also I don't mean to make any of the English uh, my English viewers angry but I kind of burnt today. Summer is uh, it's definitely on its way here in northern Italy. All right, there is a pretty sick sunset this evening. Look at the sky, man. I'm just walking from the hotel in towards the town to try and find a supermarket where I can buy some food so I can stock up uh, ahead of tomorrow's ahead of tomorrow's Grand Fondo. Because right now, the only thing that I've got to snack on is... Uh, is some bananas. I found this pretty sweet vantage point or viewing point from the top of the town. But whilst we do, still it's a bit windy actually, whilst we do have some daylight left, 
uh, Alessandro was telling me that over in Italy, the Grand Fondos are pretty much, you know, it's basically another another word for racing. He was telling me that in Italy, uh, you, you have the under 23 racing, and then once you're at 23, if you're good enough, you turn professional and you start to do the professional races. But if you're not good enough to turn professional, then you the the only other option for you to do is Grand Fondos. So tomorrow should be should be nice and grippy. Uh, speaking of which, it is the David Cassani uh, Grand Fondo. It's the 25th edition. It's it's 135 kilometers taken in 3,000 meters of climbing, so it is not flat by any stretch of the imagination. Given the area that we're in, that kind of makes sense, I guess. The start is only about 10 or 15k from uh, the town of Riola Terme, which is where I'm staying, uh, and there's gonna be 2,000 other contestants lining up in the start line. Everyone's gonna have their own personal goals. Some people are gonna be wanting to race it. Some people are gonna just be wanting to, to set a certain time. I don't know, smash, smash a few Strava segments on the climbs. Me, personally, yeah. I mean, I'm a competitive person. No doubt the competitive side is going to come out of me. But that is for tomorrow, guys. Stay tuned for that video. It's sure to be a sick day. But thank you for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like. And with that being said, I will see you tomorrow at 4 p.m. Peace.